Moving on to the second part, which is discussing the role of beam search in causing biases and low robustness. And remember, this is the second part after we already talked about well-known shortcomings of NMT. And I should mention that the ideas I'm presenting in this part are largely taken from a paper by Brian Eikema and Wilker Aziz from Amsterdam. And so these are ideas are not mine and I would love to see them getting the credit and the recognition for these ideas and not myself. Um, I found this paper really inspiring when it came out and really uh, many ideas really resonated with me. And the ones that I found are most significant are uh, these ones, namely, uh, first of all, that beam search is something that connects uh, failure cases of NMT that are otherwise unrelated. And secondly, um, they make the case that beam search is incompatible with how NMT models are currently trained or um, in the sense that the training objective and the decoding objective are not, in fact, not aligned. And finally, they establish that model samples on their own without beam search actually fit the data, the training data really well. And I'm going to briefly talk about each of these points now in, in this part. Let's start with the first one, beam search connecting unrelated failure cases. And uh, here, is a, here is a playful an analogy to explain this argument. So let's say you are investigating three crime scenes that are uh, completely unrelated on first glance. So they, they happened at different, in different places at different times and there's nothing to, to connect them. That is until you uh, notice that for some reason Bert was present um, in these places at these, at these times when, when the crimes happened. And you're starting to wonder if maybe there is a connection between uh, Bert and these crimes. And so by analogy, um, at first glance, there's no connection between, let's say, uh, length bias and, um, and hallucination, for instance. Um, but you can make the, the argument that beam search is something that connects these failure cases because it is present in most empty experiments. Um, so that's the analogy with, with my sincere apologies for likening failure cases of NMT to crimes, which I don't, don't actually think uh, they are. Um, now, uh, moving on to the second point, which is that the uh, beam search maybe being a, not an ideal decoding algorithm uh, because its, ob its objective is not aligned with the training objective. So let me quickly talk about these objectives. So in the most simple terms possible, the decoding objective of beam search is to find the highest scoring translation uh, according to the model, uh, the, high, the most probable translation y given x. Um, and uh, it's, uh, beam search is an instance of a larger class of algorithms called uh, maximum a posteriori uh, decoding algorithms that all have in common that they search for the, for the uh, most probable um, element in a, in a distribution, and um, which is also called the mode of the distribution. So that's what makes these alg algorithms, including beam search, um, mode seeking, uh, mode seeking uh, procedures. Um, so, um, and that's a simple explanation for the decoding objective. Now, um, the training objective, on the other hand, in, in, in the most simple terms possible, uh, the training objective is, to, is for an NMT model to maximize the probability it assigns to the next target token YI, given an entire input sentence X and uh, some translation prefix, so uh, some tokens y smaller than i that that uh, that came before that are the prefix of the translation until now. Uh, so that that that's the only objective that that an NMT system is trained on usually. Um, and the important takeaway message 
here is that there is nothing that constrains a mo nothing during training that constrains a model to be characterized well by its mode only. So, so that's that's a basic lesson from this. And and, um, and since beam search is basically a mode seeking procedure, that's what uh, makes it a a questionable choice uh, given. Uh, the way we are currently training NMT systems. And a, a, a different view on, on the same problem is uh, looking at how a probability mass is spread over different candidate translations. So let's uh, suppose as an example, you're translating a sentence um, along the lines of my car is, is red. And uh, we're looking at a certain uh, selection of candidate translations and uh, that, that the model can assign a probability to and that we can then choose from with some, with a, a decoding algorithm like beam search. Uh, now, the, the expectation that m many people um, have, uh, in my opinion, uh, including myself, um, is that the probability, uh, how the model spreads probability mass over these candidates should look something like this on the left here. So. Um, um, I'm, my expectation would be that it, it assigns a lot of the probability mass to uh, translations that are that are uh, about correct, and it's uh, the, that the probability of the empty translation, for instance, um, according to the model, is low. Um, same for translations that are partially correct, like my car is green or my car, um, but. In reality, um, what appears to be happening in many NM NMT models um, is that uh, prob the probability is spread almost uniformly over a large set of candidate translations. So, um, in reality, what the, what, what the probabilities would look like or how the mass would be distributed is maybe more like this. where it's difficult to, uh, to, to see the, the differences in probability be between candidate translations, um, even if they are very different um, in their meaning, and where, in fact, the empty translation is the, the most probable one according to the model, um, which, again, is, um, can be used to, to, to make the argument that given that uh, probability mass is spread uni almost uniformly over many candidates, um, beam search is not an ideal decoding algorithm to choose uh, uh, the one translation with the highest probability because it would be essentially an arbitrary choice uh, from, from this set of, of translations with a, with a similar uh, probability. And in my opinion, this is uh, hugely interesting and has influenced much of my thinking uh, about uh, decoding algorithms. Um, right, and now moving on to the, to the third and last point I want to highlight from, from this paper, uh, which is that uh, m models on their own, w without beam search being used to query the model, um, fits, models fit the data reasonably well. And here I'm, I'm uh, showing a figure from the paper by Eikema and Aziz, uh, which is showing uh, the length of translations, again, in number of tokens uh, for two language pairs, English, German, and German, English. And uh, it's, it's showing the distribution of length uh, of sentences um, in, in a translated test set. And um, the, the graph is showing beam search samples um, just sampling from your model and then the, the reference translations and um, what the, the graph is showing is that in these cases um, that, that uh, for those two models it's true that the average number of tokens um, for sampling 
is much closer to the length, average length of reference translations um, than beam search translations. And one, uh, so consequently, um, this means, um, or one way to, to uh, take this one step further is to say, um, if the, the, the models themselves uh, fit the data well, uh, there's no reason to, uh, to try and change the model architecture or the training procedure in order to solve uh, the, the, the well-known failure cases of NMT that, that, that we have seen earlier. And um, so if, if beam search is something that introduces the bias, uh, for instance, the length bias, as we see in this graph, uh, then uh, maybe the, re the reasonable thing would be to replace beam search. And what I command as is our proposing is to um, replace uh, beam search with um, a different algorithm called minimum base risk decoding or MBR that is based on samples instead, based on observations like these that I'm showing here. So as the last um, bit in this part, what I'm going to do is uh, give you an explanation and walkthrough of what minimum, the, what kind of algorithm um, minimum base risk decoding is. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, MBR decoding means to roughly means to choose a translation from a set of samples um, sampled from from the model. Um, so then the way I'm going to explain it is by having some explanation or formula on on the at the top and have uh, a concrete example at the bottom of the slide. Uh, so. Um, first thing you would do if, uh, if you use MBR is to generate a pool of samples S simply by drawing the, the samples from the model. So the, the samples are um, taken from the distribution of Y given X and the model parameters is what this formula means. And this is an example here. We have a, a pool of three candidate translations that we have sampled from the model. And from now on, we are going to completely ignore the probability of these, of these translations. And then uh, for every sample SI in the pool, we would compute its uh, utility uh, like this uh, by uh, uh, comparing it to every other uh, sample in the pool. So for, for every other sample that SJ that we uh, compare uh, this sample to, we would evaluate a function called a utility, utility function. And the, and the, the resulting, so the utility of every sample is the average uh, utility when compared to all of the other samples in the pool. And um, um, a utility function would could be can be uh, something like an uh, an evaluation metric that is usually used in in MT um, that works on the on the sentence level, of course, not a, not a corpus level metric. Um, but in general, it it would need to be something that can compute the similarity between different translations. Um, so here's an example. Um, here's an example um, where uh, we now have, for every sample in the pool, we now have an associated um, utility. Uh, and finally, uh, we would simply pick the one candidate translation uh, that has the highest uh, utility. That's what this formula at the top means, uh, it's, it simply means to select the one <laughs> hypothesis with, with the highest uh, utility. And so intuitively, MBR is um, a consensus decoding approach that uh, will, will, from a pool of samples, it will select the one hypothesis that is most similar to all other hypotheses in the pool. Uh, right, now a quick summary of this part. 
Um, there are theoretical objections to using a mode seeking algorithm like beam search for decoding. Uh, secondly, judging from model samples only uh, without beam search, models fit the data reasonably well. And finally, I command Aziz propose MBR decoding based on samples as an alternative to beam search. Uh, there's an R missing. Uh, um, based on the observation that model samples on their own are uh, fit the data well.